the main event player, I wouldn't be the Super C if it wasn't for you. So I want to say happy birthday to you. And Raw's episode last night was awesome. Everything from, from not just the beginning when Brock Lesnar showed up, and not just the whole thing when John Cena cut his promo, but the ending was sweet. The ending was awesome. You see all of the WWE superstars right there on the stage paying homage to Hulk Hogan. Seeing me and Gene Oakland in the middle of the ring with Jimmy Hart. That was awesome. And then here comes Hulk Hogan coming down the aisle, doing what he does best, you know, all this, you know, and all that, and every everything else in that particular nature. And then all of the classic superstars that we remember back in the day. Here comes Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff with the robe on and everything else like that. And is it just me? Is it just me? Or is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff trying to do an impression of Zepp Coulter? Yes, we saw the mustache all around and everything else like that. And then hopefully if Homestar had an opportunity, my best friend Homestar runner, Hector Waters, by the way, if he had an opportunity to see Raw, he would have saw his favorite wrestler, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, appear on Raw. And it was just, oh my God, classic right there. I was hoping there'd be a few more superstars. Of course, you know, it, Speaking of this, it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be a party if you didn't add the 16-time World Heavyweight Champion, the two-time Hall of Famer, the nature boy, Ric Flair, was in attendance as well. And, man, it, it's just a, it was so cool to see Hogan and so cool to see Flair. Those are the two main guys. Those are two wrestling gods, Hogan and and Flair in the same ring. We either loved Hogan or hated Flair, or we hated Flair and loved Hogan, or vice versa. It didn't matter. We digged who they were, and it was awesome. We loved it. And then, the the pretty much this was the end of the night right here, when you heard the old NWO music, and who comes out of nowhere, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash. The last time these two were around each other was around, I would, I'm gonna say 2002, and I'm talking the original NWO. And it was just so cool to see Hogan and Hall and Nash all together. And you know, Hall coming out there doing his little survey deal, and it wasn't the survey that I remembered quite well back in the day. But when Hall mentioned you know, something about, you know, does anybody want to see Hulk Hogan in the red and yellow? Crowd pretty much, you know, didn't want to. Or do you want to see Hulk Hogan in the original black and white of the NWO? And then sure enough, Hulk Hogan rips his red and yellow t-shirt and then out comes the NWO and it looks so cool. It was so awesome to see Hulk Hogan come out there wearing the NWO colors, and it just looked good. It looked perfect on him. I loved it. Seeing Hall, seeing Nash, and seeing Hogan all together, the NWO, man, it was good seeing that, and I loved every minute of it. Now, just when you think the party couldn't get any better, I made this prediction on Twitter. When you know, I went on there on Twitter, and I pretty much said that the, the end of the night is gonna end like this. It's gonna end with Hogan, with Brock Lesnar, with Paul Heyman, and with John Cena at the end of Raw. And sure enough, my prediction could have not been more right. At the beginning of the night, Brock Lesnar comes in and starts, well, Paul Heyman pretty much, starts telling everybody that this is Brock Lesnar's house. This is his domain. All of you, are our servants, our bitches, and everything else in that particular nature. And then at the end of the night, Brock Lesnar comes in and pretty much crashes the party on Hulk Hogan. Yes, crashes the party and he pretty much shoved off Piper, snarled on Ric Flair, looked face to face at Hulk Hogan. Paul Heyman comes out with the microphone in his hands and tells him, what you gonna do, Hogan? And then, Possibly, and this was the coolest line, and, and you know what? It's not often when Brock speaks, but when he says what he says, it's impact. And 
it, well, it's not impact, but it's more like, wow, I can't believe he said that, but he said it anyway. He takes the microphone, he goes to Hulk Hogan's face and says, party's over, Gramps. Or not, not Gramps, I think he said Grandpa. And I just, I was like, oh man, that's just, that's just completely wrong right there. So, sure enough, here comes John Cena coming down face to face, Brock Lesnar. We're about to get an early SummerSlam right there in front of us. And then, typical Brock Lesnar, he goes ahead, he walks out of the ring, he leaves. He's not going to fight John Cena. He's going to wait until SummerSlam coming up this Sunday on pay-per-view and on the WWE Network, which you can only see it for only $9.99. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, that's what happened. And Raw was um, Raw was good. I loved it. I digged it. I also, well, there was one thing that I did dig besides Hulk Hogan being there, was the fact that I saw that whole ridiculous thing with Stephanie and Brie Bella. Now, you know, uh, it was really really funny to see Brie Bella put the yes lock on Stephanie McMahon. And did you see? Did you see what happened to Stephanie? Did you see Stephanie gets gets hit with well not hit but you know gets the the yes lock put on her and you saw her pretty much choked half to death by Brie Bella and I just I kept laughing my fucking ass off every time I saw that. And then Stephanie goes ahead and decides that she's gonna have a match with her tonight on Raw. And the first thing I said in my head was, yeah, you're, you're going to have a match with, with her. Yeah, you're, you're, we're, we're, we're all going to anticipate Stephanie get, get her ass kicked by fucking Brie Bella. And sure enough, it doesn't happen. I mean, and, and, and here's, the, here's the sad scenario. You saw the ending. You saw what happened. Brie Bella's in the middle of the ring. Here comes Stephanie with a microphone in her fucking hand and says that she's not going to compete against Brie Oh, oh. And I, I almost forgot. I, I completely forgot about the little stupid thing that took place before all this happened. Okay. You saw the, let's see, Stephanie McMahon comes out making a confession, right? A confession, right? Stephanie McMahon has a confession. Ah, easily. So this story gets a little bit interesting. So Stephanie has a confession to tell the entire WWE universe. What could this confession be? What could it be all about? What is this confession that's going to be jaw-dropping and it's going to make everyone say, oh my fucking God. And this is what I was thinking in my head. This is what I was thinking. I want everyone to pay attention to the things that I say that could possibly be a confession that Stephanie have made up or, or not made up or, or thought of. Okay. Stephanie's confession. What could it be about? Oh, I know what it is. Stephanie is confessing to the world that she's a fucking bitch. Well, we, we've known that for a long, long time. So let's move on. Let's try, let's try the next one. Okay. Stephanie's confession is, let's see, um, Stephanie confesses that she had sexual affairs with Nikki Bella. Spicy, isn't it? Wow. But it, it's not going to exactly happen that way. And it's kind of turned on as well. But anyways, let's move on. Stephanie, her confession is the fact that she had an affair with Brie Bella's husband, Daniel Brian and immediately first of all if that ever happened every single person would say no no that would be just wrong right there or Stephanie's confession is she's having hot lesbian action with Stephanie and with Nikki and with Brie Bella It's kind of hot if you think about it, right? <laughs> okay, so none of those confessions happen, okay? The confession, the biggest confession of them all, the biggest confession that Stephanie McMahon wants to put together is this. Stephanie McMahon confesses to the world that she had an affair with Daniel Bryan while Triple H had an affair with Daniel Bryan's wife, Brie Bella. 
And then Vince McMahon wanted to go ahead and fuck the living shit out of Brie Bella and Nikki Bella and make both their lives a living hell. And then Stephanie McMahon would confess that she is having Daniel Bryan's baby. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. She is having Daniel Bryan's birth baby. Triple H gets pissed off, gets upset, ruins the match for Stephanie, and wonders, what the fuck did you do, bitch? How did you fuck that Billy Goat face, bitch? Instead of me, I am the king of kings. I am the cerebral assassin. You have got enough juice to suck this, but you want to go ahead and go after that goat? That's Stephanie's confession right there. <laughs> So none of those confessions happen, okay? That was kind of a little bit overboard, but you know what? It's the main event talk. Let me go ahead and just be a comedian for a change and let every single thing come out, okay? So what's Brie Bella's confession, or what's uh, Stephanie McMahon's confession? <sighs> Let's see. There's a therapist involved, right? A therapist. And I see the therapist, I look at who she is, and I'm, 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 what am I thinking about when I see this therapist, right? The physical therapist, the same physical therapist as working with Daniel Bryan. Obviously, we know all this was a lie from the get-go, okay? And it just all seemed too familiar to me. So, here she is, here's what, whatever her name is, goes ahead and makes this confession and, and Stephanie goes ahead and, and, and here's the stupid part. Stephanie McMahon says she has a confession, right? But yet the confession is from some other woman. So therefore we've got false advertising happening right there on Monday Night Raw. Stephanie had no confession, but this woman goes ahead and confess. She goes ahead and confess to the world that she had an affair with Daniel Bryan. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, so sad. Oh my god, I cannot believe that shit happened. Oh god, oh god. Daniel Bryan had an affair with his fucking therapist. Oh god. Oh. Oh, my life is over. I swear to fucking god, man. Oh, Daniel Bryan, how could you, man? You really fucked up, man. You left the stupid fucking hour over this shit, oh god, oh man, oh, okay, are we done, are we finished, yes, that's it, it's over, okay, um, the, the therapist comes in and does this confession that she had a, 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 a thing with Daniel Bryan and all this, doesn't that sound familiar to anybody, oh, um, gee, I think I remember, don't I, absolutely, I, of course I remember it, uh, what, what, what was I thinking? Let me see if I remember. Uh, I thought I remember some sort of an affair with somebody. Uh, it happened on an event called Impact Wrestling on, on Teen A Impact and something about some bitch having an affair with AJ's dog. That's what it is. Some bitch comes in, I think her name is Claire, and decides that she has an affair with AJ Styles and is having her baby or his baby right and I remember seeing that and the first thing that came to my head was really really so you had an affair with you had an affair with AJ Styles you're having his baby and well we know how that storyline turned out didn't it Jesus Christ. And then Brie Bella did what she did, goes ahead and slaps the hell out of the therapist and then goes ahead and attacks Stephanie. Now, Stephanie pulls off this little ridiculous move, which I saw it coming a mile away. And then, and then all of a sudden, you know, when we saw what happened and everything else like that, then she does the repeat of what happened to Stephanie when she got arrested. Now, when Stephanie got arrested, it was the most entertaining thing we watched. It was good. It was, it was the most hilarious thing ever. It was humiliating for Stephanie, right? And then Brie Bella gets the same treatment. 
the same treatment, right? The only difference was nobody was laughing. Nobody cared, you know? We went from, yeah, beat the shit out of her, get all this, and then Brie Bella goes off to jail and it's like, Stephanie does this and, and thinks that we're stupid. Stephanie, man, we are not stupid. If anything, you're stupid for pulling off something that was already done a 